Hello, my name is Tony Botting and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. In this video we show how to use the local initial mesh control in flow simulation. A goal of meshing the model is to optimize the cell count. This means putting more cells only where needed to capture flow gradients accurately. Optimizing the cell count can shave hours off the solution time and reduce memory resource requirements for the analysis. You can see in this duct model how the flow accelerates through the small gap. To capture this rapid change in flow characteristic, you need more cells than elsewhere in the model. This image shows more evidence of rapid change in flow characteristics, namely the pressure changes in a very short distance as the flow goes through the small gap. Here's a cross section of the cell mesh we used for the model. A good rule of thumb is to have at least three to five cells across the gap. Here you can see there are six cells spanning the gap. I'll take note of the gap dimension. It is 0.15 inches. You can optimize the cell mesh with functionality called local initial mesh control. Here we have a water flow study set up with an inlet mass flow rate and an outlet at static pressure. Back on the feature manager tree, I'll show a hidden part. You can program the part with special cell mesh size controls and allow fluid to pass through it. In the flow simulation tree, you may need to show the local initial mesh control icon. Right click on the study name and choose Customize Tree. Then select the local initial mesh item. Click outside of the menu and it will update to show the new item. Now right click on the local initial mesh icon and choose Insert Local Initial Mesh. Go back to the Feature Manager and select the Mesh Control part. In Automatic Settings, we'll set the minimum gap size at 0.15 inches. We'll also select the option for advanced narrow channel refinement. There are some automatic settings in here that help to get an adequate cell count across the gap. Now there's one more thing to do. We must disable the mesh control part. Go to the flow simulation menu and choose component control. From here, select the component and click on the disable button. This tells the software to allow fluid to pass through the part so the part will not block the flow. Now you can proceed to generate the mesh and take a look. So we click on Run and uncheck the Solve option since we only want to generate a mesh. Then click on the Run button. Now we'll generate a cut plot of the mesh. And you can see a rather dense mesh in the gap and a coarse mesh elsewhere in the model. In this video, we showed an example use of the local initial mesh control in flow simulation.